Welcome to a brand new episode of the Jam Pack Report, the day for September the 29th of 2020. Of course, my name is Samuel Adams, and this is a daily gaming news podcast meant to bring you the hottest news you need to know from around the industry. Hosted on YouTube and podcast services around the world five days a week, it is your one-stop shop for everything you need to know. So if you enjoy the show and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and keep coming back for more. Now, one piece of housekeeping before we do dive into today's show, we are changing the schedule. You can look for the Jam Pack Report to hit your box and your feed roughly around between 7 and 8 a.m. weekday mornings. Now, this is in comparison to the evening schedule we have been on for roughly the past year or so, Uh, but as my life changes and as the seasons do change, this makes more sense for my schedule. And of course, this is all about me. This is my podcast. So, I mean, hey, you're just here for the ride, right? Uh, Just kidding. I do hope you bear with me uh, as we do shift back to the original schedule. But now you have something to listen to during your workday. Isn't that a beautiful thing? I think it is. Uh, But regardless, let's go ahead and dive into today's news. The Xbox Series X internal SSD has 802 gigabytes of usable storage, while the one terabyte expansion card features 920 gigabytes. For those keeping track at home, neither of those are one terabyte, just to be clear. Microsoft launches the Xbox Series X console this November, and with devices now in the hands of select media outlets, we are gaining a clearer understanding of its launch offering. For both the Xbox Series X and its affordable counterpart, the Xbox Series S, some of the primary gains come from a custom NVMe solid-state drive, bolstering storage with faster speeds. The Xbox Series X ships with a 1TB internal drive, and reports now claim that 802GB of usable space is for your games and content. While the Xbox Series X ships with 1TB on board, the operating system and system files occupy a slice as space, as the case with other modern consoles. It cuts into the portion of quoted space usable for game installs, with a recent hands-on from IGN claiming 198GB remains reserved out of the box. The figure falls in line with the Xbox One X launched in 2017, which saw a similar allocation for its 1TB internal drive. The usable space on the Xbox Series S remains less clear, with its smaller 512GB SSD expected to fill up fast when cycling between games. It comes during a time when titles frequently surpass 100GB each, with expandable storage near essential for added flexibility with your installs. Microsoft claims Xbox Series S titles should occupy 30% less space than Xbox Series X games, although with results from both in-house and third-party titles yet to be seen. The Seagate Storage Expansion Card is Microsoft's solution for Xbox Series X and S, a 1TB external SSD with 920GB usable, matching the internal speed. The compact cartridge slots into a dedicated rear-facing port with PCIe 4.0 connectivity providing a direct line to the CPU. While USB storage also works, only backward-compatible titles run on the drives, and to be clear, that includes original Xbox 360 and Xbox One games. Our full guide for Xbox Series X and S expandable storage is available from Windows Central, they write, providing additional context for those with further questions, and of course the storage expansion card, which will again add 920 gigabytes to your system, is running $220, just about the cost of an Xbox Series S. So, let's talk about this and break things down. I posted this on Twitter. If the Series X goes from 1TB to 802GB, and the PS4 Pro goes from 1TB to 862GB of usable storage space after the OS, you're probably going to be looking at somewhere between 650GB and 700GB of usable space on the PlayStation 5, which ships with 825GB. This is not going to be a lot of space no matter how you cut it. Now, the Xbox does have more space to use, and the speeds are probably going to be relatively comparable because it's the same kind of technology. You are getting the same style with an SSD that is running on cutting-edge hardware, even in comparison to the PC space. PCIe 4.0 is still very, very new, which should get console players excited because load times are going to be immensely cut, and you can see a lot of hands-on uh examples of that from across the industry as more people get their hands on an Xbox Series X. 
And so, uh, with these new sizes finally revealed, this shows just how they shaved so much money off the cost of these consoles. Because in reality, both of these should probably have a 2 terabyte drive. That's just the reality of it, uh, if you want to be consumer friendly and, and player focused, but both Sony and Xbox know uh, that they need to shave as much cost off the top of these consoles as they can to get them in the hands of players, and they want this to be a fast turnaround. They want you to abandon your Xbox One X and your PlayStation 4 Pro and pick up the next big thing because that's what they are going to be focusing on in two to three years time. Uh, and so to see 802 gigabytes proves to me in my mind that you we're going to be seeing more uh, consoles released that have larger hard drives, just as we saw with the PlayStation 4, which launched with 500 gigabytes. The same for the Xbox One. You then saw one terabyte, and you can, of course, expand your storage as well by hand. And so we'll see how long it takes, but uh, I'll tell you right now, as storage becomes cheaper and as PCIe 4.0 technology becomes more mainstream, uh, you will see the prices drop. And my main question is, will you see the cost of these cards drop? Uh, because 220 gigabytes for a one terabyte expansion is a pretty good price considering the technology, but for a gamer that is looking at this as nothing more than a PS1 memory card with a new coat of paint on it, that changes things slightly. Uh, that's still not that great of a deal. Uh, so we'll see how this all shakes out, but again, I am looking forward to seeing how much space the PlayStation 5 has because that could be a big deal breaker for a lot of people that might like playing a lot of big budget games. But speaking of the PlayStation 5, now GameStop Ireland is telling some PlayStation 5 pre-order customers they will have to wait until 2021. Multiple VGC readers have received notice from the retailer claiming it had recently received confirmation that it won't be able to fulfill your pre-order until 2021. The message claims that the delay is due to circumstances out of our control and offers the option to remain in the pre-order queue or cancel entirely. The Irish retailer's message to customers comes less than 24 hours after Sony started informing European retailers of their PlayStation 5 launch day allocation. On Monday, UK's Shop 2 claimed it had received PlayStation 5 allocation details from Sony, which meant it would not be able to fulfill all of its pre-orders. Shop 2 has emailed its PS5 pre-order customers to either tell them that their pre-order is safe for launch, or that they won't receive the console in time for the November 19th release date, of course, 19th in the UK. Amazon has also warned some PS5 pre-order customers that they may not receive their console on the day of release. Sony confirmed that the PlayStation 5 release date of November the 12th in the US, Japan, Canada, Mexico, Australia, and South Korea would stand earlier this month, and the rest of the world will get the console a week later on November the 19th, including Europe. Multiple retailers sold out of PlayStation 5. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, multiple retailers sold out of PlayStation 5 pre-orders just hours after launch details were announced on September the 16th, despite Sony telling fans that pre-sales for the console would begin the following day. Not a great look, and this goes back to a conversation that many people have been having on podcast, where they ask the question, why do people get multiple pre-orders? Because I have seen a lot of people that are even within the gaming industry that have multiple pre-orders of the Xbox Series X, the S, and the PlayStation 5. I know some people that have three, I know some people that have five, and you might be asking why. That feels greedy. And to some degree, I do understand that, because at the end of the day, it's all a roll of the dice whether or not you get one of these pre-orders. Uh, but if you do want to have the best chance of locking at least one down, uh, then you would pre-order in as many places as possible because Amazon is wavering a bit, GameStop in Ireland is canceling some, Walmart I know has been canceling a few as well. Uh, you never know if you're actually going to get your hands on one of these pieces of hardware or not. Uh, and so the best bet is to pre-order as many as possible. Uh, and of course, that is the nature of capitalism, isn't it? If you have the means, you can buy whatever you want. Uh, so here you have just one more example of pre-orders just being completely fumbled in a lot of different ways around the world. And this is kind of to be expected because, again, uh, there is never going to be a calm, cool, and collected pre-order and launch period. It is exciting, it is chaotic, and that's just kind of the nature of the beast most of the time.
But if you are looking forward to playing Call of Duty on your next-gen console, don't worry, Cold War Zombies is getting its reveal this week. You can tune in on Wednesday and see the full reveal. Now, of course, Treyarch is very notorious for having their Call of Duty Zombies as a big part of their game, uh, but if you do want to learn more about what is going to be happening in Black Ops Cold War, you can tune in at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on September the 30th on YouTube.com slash Call of Duty to get your full update. Now, of course, there was some data mined from Pontex Pond, the teaser site, and does not look like things are going super well inside Soviet Nuclear Control Bunker 23, which does sound like a place that some late 70s zombie outbreaks would be taking place. Now, of course, Cold War is launching on November the 13th, and a multiplayer beta will come to PC on October the 15th and other platforms as well. Uh, so if you do want to check out what is happening in the world of Call of Duty, that's happening in just a number of hours from now. But new games are also on the horizon outside of Call of Duty. The still unannounced Need for Speed Hot Pursuit remaster has been raided. A polled retailer page excuse me, previously listed a November release date. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered was rated by Korea's Games Rating and Administration Committee earlier this month, as spotted by a VGC contributor, Andrew Marmo, suggesting that a release for the title could be imminent. The remastered version of the Criterion Racer was first outed in a VentureBeat report in June, then listed by Amazon UK for release on multiple consoles, including Switch, on November the 13th. Hot Pursuit is set in the fictional county of Seacrest, which is based on the American states of California, Oregon, and Washington. The game was the first Need for Speed to feature Autolog, the social interaction system that connects friends for head-to-head -head races and compares player stats. EA announced in February that it had handed Need for Speed development duties back to Criterion Games as it planned to restructure Ghost Games, which developed the last four entries in the racing series. And during June's EA Play event, the publisher offered a first look at some of its in-development projects for next-gen consoles, including Need for Speed, which it said would offer a seamless immersion which gets you into the race in a matter of seconds. The publisher also announced plans to bring seven games to Nintendo Switch in the next 12 months. Following the recent release of Burnout Paradise Remastered for Switch, EA confirmed plans to release Apex Legends, FIFA 21, and Lost in Random for Nintendo's console. Other titles coming to the platform are reportedly Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville and an EA Originals game from Velen Studios. I love Need for Speed. Growing up, it was one of my favorite racing franchises. It was kind of, for lack of a better term, going head-to-head. Haha, -head. <laughs> see what I did there? Uh, with Burnout. Uh, and Burnout was also phenomenal. Phenomenal, remains phenomenal to this day. Uh, but again, this is one of those strange games where I'm not sure this one is actually coming out. Because again, I would like to remind you, today is September 29th. This game is rated for release on November the 19th. Unless this is some kind of stealth drop just in time for the holiday season, uh, this is going to be one that could get pushed back. Now, November the 19th, notably, that is the release of the PlayStation 5 in the UK and other areas around the world outside of that initial launch wave. Uh, so you could be seeing some kind of next-gen game, potentially. Again, that has not been confirmed, but you could be seeing something that has enhancements for the Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5, uh, but we will see how they all shake out whenever we get more information, hopefully in the next few days, because uh, you're running out of time there. Uh, however, one game that is doing incredibly well is Super Mario All-Stars, with physical copies outselling Avengers in September of 2020. Now, a brief pause. It is worth mentioning, these are physical copies. We are in the middle of a pandemic where digital copies are the majority of how people are buying games. Uh, and so, with that being said, the top 10 list provided by the GFK chart track is Super Mario 3D All-Stars, Marvel's Avengers, Mafia Definitive Edition, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Mafia Trilogy, Minecraft Dungeons, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, Minecraft, and GTA 5. Now again, the Super Mario 3D All-Stars includes Super Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy, and it's only on sale until March of next year. This is a very controversial release because it includes three games that people have been wanting for a very long time on the Nintendo Switch, but they're only available for roughly six months. That doesn't make any sense to a lot of people, but at the same time, you now have this sense of urgency where you have this window of opportunity to get in and get these three games on the Nintendo Switch, whether physically or digitally, and then get out ASAP because they're leaving ASAP. 
And again, I want to reiterate, the digital version is being pulled from shelves. The physical copies will no longer be sold. This is going to be a hot commodity for you in about a year or two years time, unless they do choose to change their strategy and start releasing them on a larger scale once more. Uh, but this shows that Nintendo knows how to market their games and people have been wanting uh, these three specifically on the Nintendo Switch. Of course, what happened to Super Mario Galaxy 2? Uh, not sure about that one, but I sure wish that would come out. Uh, however, if you do want to dive in, again, these are all bundled together for 60 bucks. And I've heard mixed reports. Some people love the nostalgia of having these three iconic classics on their modern console. At the same time, these are simply just ports of the original games. These are not remasters or remakes. These are just three Mario games that you played when you were a kid. Uh, so it changes things slightly because it's not really what you would uh, want or expect in 2020. Uh, but hey, it is what Nintendo is giving, so I suppose you better learn to love it. Now, to round out today's show, a classic is finally leaving us. Farmville is shutting down on the 31st of December of 2020. Now, it first launched in 2009, and for a lot of people, this is what got them on Facebook. I played Farmville a good bit whenever I was a kid. 2009 uh, would pin me right around 6th grade, I want to say. Uh, somewhere around there. Let me do the math on that. 11 years ago, I'm 23 now, so I would be 12? Yeah, 6th grade. Boom. Look at that quick math. Ooh, man, I should, I should go back to school for math. No, I shouldn't. Uh, but it has been 11 years since its initial launch back in 2009, and Zynga says they're officially ending the Farmville run. Uh, now, don't worry. Of course, the Farmville 3 for mobile devices is going to be launching soon, so you can still get your Farmville fix. Uh, but this is the end of an era as Facebook is ending support for Adobe Flash games. Man, what a legacy this one leaves behind. Not really, but it did kill some time whenever I was in the middle of class and we had Chromebooks back in the day. Uh, now, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. If you did, drop me a like down below and let me know what stories caught your eye. But specifically, what do you think about that external and the internal Series X internal SSD? I mean, you know what I'm saying there. What do you think about the limited space? 802 gigabytes. Do you think that's too little? 920 usable in the expansion card? How do you feel about that? Would love to hear your thoughts on that. But until tomorrow, you guys have a fantastic day. I'll talk to you soon, and peace.